Right, morning everyone. Ooh, that's a nice, nice bit of feedback. <laughs> uh, good morning and welcome to our Harvest uh, Festival service. Uh, this is one of our services that we hope to be a little bit more accessible to some of the younger people in our congregation. Uh, we hope it's accessible to everybody um, and uh, we also hope it's accessible to those of you who are at home and watching this later in the week. Our monetary donations this year are going to the British Red Cross Afghanistan appeal. And we have a very short video where Nesses Four Magendi, the head of the IFRC delegation in Afghanistan, and he will tell us why this is so important this year. Half the population of Afghanistan is going to rely on humanitarian assistance in one way or another. The drought, the COVID-19, and massive displacement, plus the compounding conflict. It's a country which is facing uh, remarkable, massive humanitarian needs. And that was before this uh, escalation of recent weeks, which means the number is likely to increase. I speak with my colleagues every day, who says that they continue to deliver services. They've seen an increase in needs. We really need to support the country with financial, that will enable uh, us together with the support of the British Red Cross and other Red Cross workers and partners to support in the delivery of services and assistance to the people who have been affected by these multiple shocks in Afghanistan. The other charity we're supporting is Rydale Food Bank and as many of you know, um, our local food bank is currently closed um, I'm sure that it will reopen, but not necessarily as it is at the, or as it has been up to this point. Uh, for the moment, the food parcels are being processed and distributed by Rydale District Council, and that is where all our food collected today will go. This, of course, is a very unfortunate time for our food bank to um, to be in difficulties, because not only have many people lost their twenty pound um, universal credit uplift, uh, but heating and other costs are just soaring. So there are people who are gonna be really, really struggling this year. So any food ready for them is gonna be really welcome. Okay, our first song this morning is for the fruits of his creation. And if you've brought any gifts, whether it's, it's uh, food or money, if you'd like to bring it up to the front and we'll put it on the table. Um, if you have forgotten to do anything, or you're watching online, um, you can actually donate via the pink button on the website. Uh, so just, just mark it to say it's for the Red Cross Afghanistan appeal, and then it will, it will go to that, okay? <laughs>
Things great have small beginnings. Every downpour is just a raindrop. Every fire is just a spark. Every harvest is just a seed. Every journey is just a step, because without that step, there will be no journey. Without that raindrop, there can be no shower. Without that seed, there can be no harvest. Do you like to sit? In the beginning, there was nothing, and out of nothing, you fashioned a universe so vast, so unimaginable, that we can only sigh with amazement when we stare upwards at a starlit night. And within this universe, you positioned the earth and populated it, provided for it, and designed for it to be a place of beauty. Creator God, thank you. Thank you. In the beginning, there was just potential, the seed within the packet, soil's nutrients, Sunshine's warmth, rain clouds gathering, bread encoded, primed and ready, should be planted and allowed to grow. Creator God, thank you. Thank you. Today's reading is from Genesis 2, verses 8 to 9. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And then the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and of good and evil. In the beginning there was humankind placed within your garden, made steward, gardener and caretaker of this place of beauty, given responsibilities and the capacity to enjoy. And yet among the seeds we have sown have been weeds and crops of our own choosing, which have not shown fruit or spread and choked the earth. Creator God, forgive us. Forgive us. Right, and I invite uh, Sue Evans to come up and tell us what she thinks of the reading. <laughs> okay, I might need some help this morning, so I'm thinking maybe we've got four or five children, which would be really good. So, um, as Lynn said, I'm Sue. I haven't been coming to this church for very long. Um, we moved into Norton last year in lockdown and I'm married to Jonathan. Uh, we have two daughters and we have seven grandchildren who, as you can imagine, keep us very busy. You may have seen one or two of them with us in the last few weeks. Um, so I asked myself this morning, because it's quite nerve-wracking standing here, how did I uh, agree to this, talking to you uh, lovely folk in church about my faith? Um, and I think I'm willing to share some of my story um, because I realize that if other Christians hadn't shared their stories or stories about Jesus with me over the last 60 years or so, I wouldn't be here today. So I haven't always been a Christian, although um, I was as a child a bit like some of you children here. I was sent to church, it was a congregational church at Withensey, and I remember singing the song that Rita had us sing a few weeks ago about Zacchaeus being a little, little man. Is that right? Is that what we sang? Yeah. And I went to something called Joyful Juniors, uh, which was held on Withensey Beach. I had godparents who gave me this. It says in the front here, to Susan Wendy on her fourth birthday. I mean, imagine being four and given that, you wouldn't be able to read it, would you? <laughs> and then following that, uh, to Susan Wendy, 1966. I mean, I know that was the year of the football, but I think I was, I was about seven then. But again, I mean, for a seven-year-old, I mean, I can't even read the print now. So I think if you're a godparent here and you're given a gift, try to make it a bit more colourful and picture, maybe, I don't know, but there you go. But those godparents were very kind to me, they cared for me. In fact, my Auntie Mary at 96 is in a care home at Thorngambold, and the boot's on the other foot now, I'm caring for her. I went to Gal Guides, I did Bob a Job. Who remembers Bob a Job? Who remembers what a Bob was? 
What was it? Well, a shilling. Yeah, shilling. So, what, yeah, the equivalent today would be, like you say, 5p. So, a few little ones, as girl guides, brownies, scouts. We went round the Withensee Town Centre and we knocked on doors, usually of people we knew, and we asked for a bob for a job. So we swept the leaves up and they gave us money and that went to the guides. So, so I think I was a good person. I did my Duke of Edinburgh's award up to gold level, which made me mum very proud. Went to Buckingham Palace, met Prince Philip, you know. And I think somewhere in my head, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. So I don't know that there was this the song, you know, Jesus loves me this I know because the Bible tells me so. But I think something has to happen from it to go to our head into our heart to know Jesus. So we've been hearing from the word today in um about planting and we had a poem Sophia read about harvest and seeds and I just thought if you children want to help me would actually plant a couple of seeds very quickly. We have to be quick. Yeah, so, if anybody's good at gardening, can't do some planting. No, Rosie. Jacob, 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 Jacob. 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 If anybody can plant something, and we can see. Do you think it'll grow today? Do you think it might grow today? We need a big one to get some soil. Can you get a little bit of soil? Can you pop it in there, do you think? Isn't that where they get it on there? Can you pop that in there, do you think? See, see if they can make something grow today. I don't know. And there's some seeds in here. Can you plant them? Do you think? Yeah. Can you plant? Oh, wow, that's amazing. Because I helped my grandma plant the seeds. He helped his grandma plant seeds, so this is going to work. Right, you pop them in there then. Can you do that? That's great. That'll probably be enough for now. And then you pop the seeds in. Just put more in. What? In there. Oh, brilliant. And then do you think we need to give them some water? Yeah, give them just a little bit. Otherwise, we might have a bit less to Wow. Now, what do you think those seeds need to grow? That's it. You can go and sit down now if you want. What do you think they might need to grow? Do you think they need sunshine and warmth? And light. Do you think they need lots of things like that? Those seeds are not going to become this overnight, are they? No, it's going to take some time, isn't it? Oh, well done. Well done. Well done. If you want, Rosie, would you like to give all the children some seeds to take home? Is that all right? There's some seeds there to share out. I don't know if we need them more, but. So all the, all the children are going to take some seeds home, which I hope will help them to remember. Because I remember years ago in church, a chap bought a chrysanthemum in and he talked about the birds and the flowers of the earth and how much God cared for them. And that sermon stuck with me forever because he had a chrysanthemum, big flower. So what about our hearts? What about the seeds? That, this is one my granddaughter made with crosses. And what makes our heart change? With, you know, we understand that the seeds need warmth and light and everything to grow. And these words on here are probably seeds in my heart that were planted by other people. Kindness, encouragement, love, acceptance, forgiveness, help, being non-judgmental. And I think something had to happen, a bit like we watered the earth. Something had to happen to my heart, because my heart, can't do it, but my heart was broken. My heart was broken. I'd reached a point in my life, um, long story, won't share today, um, but it was broken. And in my brokenness, I'd begun to question the meaning of life. I even found myself looking at my hand and asking, what makes my hand move, my voice speak? What makes me, me? And I think with all the questions and the ups and downs of my life, I was more open to hearing and receiving Jesus' love and forgiveness and grace and to being transformed from seeds to something not as beautiful as those flowers, but something transformed. So other people I didn't know at the time were praying for me. 
I wouldn't have known, but I was shown God's love in practical, caring ways. I was fed and sheltered. I was given things. For example, a job, a cooker, a bed. Um, imagine my surprise one day when I came home from work and found a cooker on my doorstep. I'm thinking, is God for real? Has that dropped from heaven? I didn't know, but that chap worked for the council and somebody had sent a cooker in that no longer worked. And I had it plumbed in and every time you switched on all three rings, it didn't work anyway, so never mind. I was then invited to a live link, Mission England, in 1984. And I think for me, that was the water into the heart. Uh, the reading was the reading we had last week about the rich young man and his rejection of Jesus for his wealth. The music was played by a guy called George Hamilton Four, very powerful. And it was that amazing hymn, Amazing Grace. And the words today, they still mean so much. Um, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And I think I couldn't walk away from Jesus, unlike the rich young man. His Holy Spirit was so powerful that evening in that live link mission that from the top of my roots of my hair to the tips of my toes, I don't know to this day how I got from the back where I was, jeans, leather jacket, arms folded, head bowed, I didn't need Jesus, to the front of the room committing my life. So I went home, Jonathan came in from work and he said, you've done it, haven't you? You've become a Christian. Apparently he could see it in my face. I wasn't quite glowing like the advert for Ready Breck, but he could see a transformation that I had that evening gone from the head knowledge of Jesus to my heart being filled with his spirit. Since then, um, it's been a journey. I'm not saying it's all been easy. We all know that life throws stuff at us. Um, but I have been open to growing. I have been healed. I have been restored. I have been forgiven. And I, the biggest challenge and I think Graham shared this last week, I have been willing to forgive others who have hurt me because I have been forgiven. I've learned to pray, which is really important. I've continued to read God's word and come to church, which is really important. And I was willing to do this today, even though <laughs> it's a bit of a muddle. I would like to be part of a small midweek group. It's really important, I think, for us to meet other than in church, and that's been a big part of my growing and healing. And I've learned to give, no matter how much or how little. I've learned that it is in giving that we are blessed. I've been involved in some amazing ministries, youth, pastoral care, all sorts. And I recognize I'm a work in progress, and God's not finished with me yet. But I'm excited about what he's going to do now we're here and we're part of St. Peter's uh, and Jenny's coming to join us. So I want to encourage us all today, especially the children, to open our hearts to what God wants to do in our lives so that we can bear fruit and God can reap the harvest. Amen. There you go. I'll clear up my mess later. Okay, we're going to sing Amazing Grace in a few moments. But first, there's an old Korean proverb that says, if you plant a bean, then you will harvest only beans, not grapes or strawberries. God gave us new life through Jesus Christ and planted special seeds of forgiveness and love in our hearts. What fruit will we bear in our daily lives? Okay, so I want us all to be very quiet I want you to close your eyes and I want you to try and listen and then I'll say a little poem and then we'll sing Amazing Grace. God of harvest, gardener supreme, you place us at the center, feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, 
look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives in service to you and others. God of harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us, that our lives may bring glory to you. I think that sums up what Sue said. Okay, so we sing Amazing Grace. Just maybe before we start to sing, Louis has written the words of the verse of that song. Just take a moment just to read them through. Understand the magnitude of God that's dying and rising to you personally. He loves you that much. You give it. Maybe you sing these words. Maybe you've not offered your heart to God for a long time. Maybe you've never offered your heart to God before. Maybe this might be your moment to say, maybe God's looking in. Take my time. Maybe if you sing and you pray that prayer, you're accepting God, you're accepting that you believe in Him and His forgiveness. Maybe it wouldn't be maybe after service, you wouldn't have the leaders and you would have to pray with them. Just, just take a moment, just take in those words. Just pass.
God, thank you for the many ways in which you provide for us. Food, family, friendship, housing, health, happiness, and ways to use our time and talents. We lift to you to the ways in which we remain in need of these things, God of generosity. May your kingdom come. We pray for people in our community and beyond who are facing unemployment, ill health, isolation or money worries at this time, and especially for those who are unable to afford enough to eat. We pray for supportive relationships, practical provision and real hope. God of compassion, may, may your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thank you that you call us to play our part, working with you and with others to bring about change. We pray for political decision makers and leaders. Give them courage and insight to develop policies and systems that support the flourishing of all. So that even in challenging times, no one goes hungry and everyone has dignity. God of justice, may, may your kingdom come. come. Thank you for those who are, who are serving and caring for others in churches, in charities and in public services, in our neighbourhoods, in our neighbourhoods, in our homes, in our homes, in our homes and many other content, contexts. Would you give them strength, rest and perseverance as they work to support others? We ask that they, that they too would receive all they need to thrive, God of love. May your, your kingdom, kingdom come. And now we will all join in with the Lord's Prayer. Of our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share a sign of the peace. Peace be Okay. On to our notices. Um, what should we do? Let's, let's go for, I'm trying to think which order to do it. So, um, the licensing service on Wednesday, we had our rehearsal, it's all very exciting. Um, please, please, as many of you who can come as possible. Um, it's going to be an awful lot of clergy here, um, but it'd be lovely, it'd be lovely to, um, to have a great turnout. So 7.30, if you are um, providing a cake, thank you to all those who've agreed. Um, 
if you could just bob it into Church House on your way in. And if we could still do with a couple more cakes. So if anyone's um, feeling enthused by the Bake Off, there's a sign-up sheet at the back. Thank you very much. Um, and then next Sunday, so this time next week, we are having a bring and share, which will be um, a bit of time to be church family together and, uh, and meet um, Reverend Jenny in that way. Again, if you're able to bring something to share, it's a finger buffet, so not, no jelly or coleslaw, please, guys. Um, again, there's a sign-up sheet at the back with one or two ideas of things you might like to bring. Um, but even if you can't bring something, please do come. It'd be, uh, you know, it's just nice to gather together and have that time together. Um, thinking again about Jenny's arrival, I had a quick chat with Neil earlier. We'd really like to ask, um, as a church family, whether you would just commit 30 minutes of time on Tuesday night just to pray for Jenny, for her ministry at St. Peter's over the next three years. So we're not going to um, gather together. We're not going to set a time on that because I know different people have different commitments. But please, please, if you can just set a reminder on your phone or, or however you do it, on your fridge, um, if you could just commit 30 minutes of your time just to pray for her and for all, the, um, all that God's going to do through her um, in our community. We'd really, really appreciate that. Thank you. A uh, couple more that I've been given, a message from Tracy. Um, if anyone's not had their children's society box emptied this year and they'd like it emptying, please, can you bring it to church during October, sometime in October, because that's the last time they're going to be emptied this year. Fab. And then one um, from Anne and Sue. The um, shoeboxes, so the annual Christmas appeal for the children um, in distress, the children in orphanages in Romania. We like to send as many boxes as we can um, for children and also for older people. Um, sometimes it's the only gift they receive at Christmas. So if you'd like to pack a shoebox um, for a child, a young person or an elder, uh, elderly person, um, please can you ask Anne or Sue for a leaflet? Um, and the leaflet explains what you can and can't put in there and what you need to do and, and the kind of rules for getting it through customs. Um, and the information about this and contact details for Anne will go out in the email as well, so you can, um, you can get that back to her. They need to be back for Sunday the 31st of October so that they can head off on their long journey. So bear in mind, if any of the children are doing it, that's half term. So in, in get yourself kind of organised. I know half term things go awry in my head. So um, 31st of October, the last date for the shoeboxes. Thank you very much. And um, we'd just like to um, pray together as a church family um, for Jean's great-grandson. So Jean's great-grandson, Bobby, is um, in hospital. He's going to have some open heart surgery in Leeds um, Tuesday next week. So obviously that's a very, very big operation. So um, we just, it would be really good if we can just spend a minute in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we hold up Bobby to you now. Lord, we ask you to be with him in the coming days and particularly on Tuesday through this surgery. Lord, we know you are a God of peace and you are a God of healing. And we ask for healing in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for Jean and for the rest of Bobby's family in what must be a really troubling, worrying time, Lord. We ask you to gather around them the right medical professionals, the right family support, the right friends, Lord, to say the right things, to do the right things. And Lord, we, we hand Bobby over to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Birthdays. Anybody going to admit? Oh, yeah, is my mum here? Yeah. Ha. I wasn't going to shop your mum, but Beth clearly is. 
it was, did you come up last week? Do you want to come up again just to not embarrass, because my mum won't like being on her own, so come up again and then it'll make her feel a bit better. <laughs> Don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful, we were only celebrating yesterday and I forgot. <laughs> Right, let's have a happy birthday to the... No one else, no one else admitting? Last call? No? Okay, let's have a happy birthday to these two. Thank you very much. Right. We're doing an, what I look on as an absolute classic next. We're going to do the Harvest Samba, and the Harvest Samba is never the same without some musical instruments. So I'm going to put the box of musical instruments down here. I'm glad someone's excited about the musical instruments. It's not just for children. <laughs> This is the bit the musicians love, all this extra noise. Okay, let's harvest samba. <laughs> Thank you. 
God's Holy Spirit who hovered over the walls of the tree and formed the world of chaos, form us in the likeness of Christ, and renew the face of the
Wow, you have stopped really well there. Well done. Um, a huge thank you to everybody who's put this service together. Um, thank you to all of you who've brought um, produce and uh, things that we can take. Um, it's amazing that we can be a blessing to our community. Uh, and thank you to all our bonus musicians. You were amazing. Um, remember, sign up at the back. See you on Wednesday. See you on Sunday. We'll be hearing from our new priest in charge, which is amazing to say. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.